So we're in front of Raphael, the Abba Madonna, and um, it is absolutely beautiful. There, that, I'm done. Um, again, some of the things that you're gonna see with Leonardo da Vinci, where the shadow areas have lighter and darker and the opaque colors are painted in shadow. You're also seeing Leonardo da Vinci's gradually darker farther away, that's chiaroscuro. You're seeing Leonardo's smoke, his sufmato, where you have softening of edges, just beautiful. And if you look closely, you can see the juxtaposing of colors, little bits of pinks and grays, and he's varying the colors, which will be a Monet concept. Now, it's very common for the art world to paint something in white, or you add white to your color, like a red lake or something. So as you go to your opaque paint right here, so imagine the whole thing's painted this color, variations of lighter and darker. Then he's gonna take, say, this color, and it's gonna be like a sheet of plexiglass, and he's gonna go over all the areas he wants medium dark, and he puts a light coat of medium light red over the whole thing. Then it dries and he's gonna take that same medium dark color and go a little farther to the right. Now it has two coats and it makes it darker. Then it dries and then he goes to the right and it has three coats and it makes it darker and it dries and it goes to the right and four coats and five coats and six coats. There ends up being 10, 15 layers of glaze in an area. Um, the softening of edges is beautiful. The softening of his hair. You do see signs of Botticelli where you have the varying line weight, especially in the halo around the Christ child, the thin line and then disappearing and appearing is a beautiful, elegant line. Um, the hair is softly painted. I love the radial line and the circle composition. Everything you need is in this circle. So he's gonna lead you around. You're, you're gonna go from the foot to the knee, to the hand, around this edge. This is an implied line where she's looking this way. I don't know where she's looking. We'll bring that up that maybe the eye should have been down here, but that's okay. And then down and he's looking to peer. And to bring you back around, you start to see this fur is making a turn with this and bringing us back up and we make a loop and we keep saying everything I need is here. Don't have me go anywhere else. I love the simplification and flattening out of the hand here. It reminds me of Vermeer later on. And there's a stillness when you do that. And I think you see that in the Vermeers here at the National Gallery. So this is beautifully done because it doesn't have all the intricate details of everything else. I find it interesting though that this line is found so hard and sharp and this is hard and sharp and then this is hard and sharp. But again, the softness of the blending and the face against the sharp line makes other things look soft. Looking at it as a drawing and you notice this part right here by the upper corner of her eye, of her uh, shoulder, notice how this fold is lighter and becoming the same value and then this is darker and it's coming in forward. And that contrast makes this come forward. And you'll see that in a few places where the light green here is disappearing and this darker part is coming in front. Or how the dark part of this little top on her head is going behind the lighter part here bringing this forward. There is a little bit of a fragmenting where you have aerial perspective again, notice everything getting bluer, grayer, farther away, but you have these buildings, you have the, the cross, you have the figures being stamped out. As we move on to see his other pieces, he's gonna slowly change as an artist. One of the things I found very nice about the small Cowper Madonna in 1505 is I really like the transparent colors of the use of the burnt umber and raw umber to make it look like a shadow. So now there's a combination of making something have a transparent depth to it. Is one is you're painting different values in an area. That's Leonardo and Raphael, where it's lighter, darker, lighter, darker in the shadow. It gives a sense of transparency. But the next thing is, when you start to see the raw sienna and burnt sienna colors, 
that are underneath the opaque colors that are put over the top. And this is gonna be something that you're gonna see the 1860s, the 1800s to 1910 in the French Academy do exclusively. Um, you're starting to see the modeling getting darker farther away. You're starting to see Giotto's effect of everything getting darker. But when you soften an edge like Leonardo and you have Giotto's effect here, then you're darker farther away, you're softening an edge and it's starting to become realistic. When I compare this to early Christian work and everything being outlined, and I look at the sensitivity of the hands, even when I'm starting to see the dark line and then a softer light line and some fingers disappearing, this is quite beautiful. And it's very reminiscent of a sergeant hand, very beautifully painted. There's a, a sense of movement where you bring attention to one part of finger and another. I don't quite see that in the foot though. So I'm seeing beautiful passages where there's this thick white area, and then it's, and then it's transparent, and it's darker. Well, here it's lighter than what it's behind, and now it's darker than what it's behind. And there's just some beautiful passages, and yet you still have some of these lines that are found farther away that are attracting attention.